What's happening YouTube? Kite Planet here or Kite if you're like that. Some people aren't yeah. like that, but I'm like that. You see what we got today. You see the title. You see the thumbnail. We are going to be creating Maki Zenin, a Nin ability or a Hatsu. Yes, Maki Zenin. Zenin Maki. Maki-san. Some people's waifu. I don't, I don't know. Not mine, but a lot of people's. She's that. I'll give her that. But yeah. We're going to be creating her a Nin ability. I really like doing her and I like doing Toji Paws. I like creating abilities for them because they don't have abilities. And so I get to really think outside of the box and I take little small references from what they do, but it's not much because they don't possess any powers. So I get to really get outside of the box with them. So if you could think of any other characters from different verses or whatever that don't possess really abilities they're more just combat hand to hand and stuff like baki would be a good one and yeah stuff like that i would really love to do characters like that so suggest but i don't really have time to go searching and looking for all them so that's where y'all come in yeah all right so first things first guys we're gonna get right into it we must discuss and decide which nin affinity maki is going to possess okay so on my on the toji video if you haven't seen that go check it out uh, a lot of people wanted me to do Enhancer because of the Heavenly Restriction. And I don't really like that. I feel like that's not very original because everything granted to them from the Heavenly Restriction is something granted to them by learning the basics of Nin. Ren, Ten, Hatsu, and Zetsu grant you everything a Heavenly Restriction grants you. So basically every person who's a Nin user in Hunter x Hunter, if they were put in the Jujutsu Kaisen verse, would have the abilities of a, of a Heavenly Restriction. It's just enhance perception speed and power it's just not it's just not something i would want to focus on so that's why i don't want to go the enhancer route everybody wants to go enhancer and all that stuff but when you have to do enhancers abilities are not very complex they're not really i don't want to say they're not worth it because you have people like netero but netero is such a master of nin that his ability doesn't even focus on enhancement it's more conjuration and manipulation he conjures the guanin bodhisattva and he manipulates it Enhancements just to make it stronger. You don't see the effects of enhancement. You just infer that they're there because of how strong it is. So enhancement's not the route I want to go with Maki. And Maki is just like Toji. Heavenly Restriction, they are special within their own verse. So I think let's agree to go specialist route again. I know I said I'm not giving out specialist to everybody, but Maki is the same as Toji. So she deserves the specialist category. They're the only two that I've given it. And they might be the only ones for a long while if I continue to do you know nin and stuff so yeah she's going to be a specialist i hope that's fine and she's got a pretty freaky ability so let's just get right into it all right so first we have to go with the name of the hatsu the name of the nin ability what is it going to be i didn't want to leave out the heaven or the heavenly restriction so i wanted to take inspiration from the name of heavenly restriction and try to name it something similar for the hatsu or with the hatsu so I wanted to go inverse of that, the opposite, and go Hells, right, or Hellish or something like that. So I decided on naming it Hells Coliseum. That is the name of Maki's Hatsu. I like that. Or you could do Hellish Coliseum, something like that, but I like Hells Coliseum. That's the name of the Hatsu. Pretty cool. You can let me know your thoughts on the name. Also drop a better name if you have one after you hear the ability. Okay, so what is Hells Coliseum? All right, so... This is kind of a weird ability. It's kind of really freaky. I think you guys are going to like this. All right. Before I get into like what it really does, I want to say that it's it's kind of like the concept of a reverse domain expansion. So she doesn't possess a domain expansion. So I wanted to go the opposite of it, just like a heavenly restriction is the opposite of having cursed energy or whatever. So I wanted to keep with that trend. This ability, Hell's Coliseum, instead of doing what a domain expansion does and creating overwhelming odds in the favor of the caster of the domain, what this does, what Hell's Coliseum does is level the playing field. It creates even odds or even puts the person that cast it at a negative advantage, at a disadvantage. So that's the way, the direction I wanted to go with this. And I think Maki is the perfect candidate to wield this Hatsu. Okay, so first off, what does Hell's Coliseum do? The first thing it does is it creates a giant N bubble. And an N bubble is, I say an N bubble, N is the uh, application of Nin that uses Ren and Tin. You use Ren to expand your aura and Tin to maintain its shape. So just like Nobunaga, when he was 
keeping watch over Gon and Kilua, and he pulled his sword and he created the little light blue bubble around him and anything that gets within this bubble you can tell everything about position size shape all that stuff or a quantity you can use n to do that so n tells everything about anyone once it's in so she creates a n bubble that removes the ability to use hatsu within so once you're inside of this bubble you cannot wield hatsu you can wield nin do not mistake that you can wield Nin. You just cannot wield your Hatsu. You have access to Ren, Ten, and Zetsu. You just can't use Hatsu. So you can use all the advanced applications, Gil, Ryu, uh, Kyo, all that stuff. You just cannot wield Hatsu. All right. So next, or actually, once you're in the Coliseum, in this bubble that she created, you if you step out of it, if you decide to step out of it, just like the opposite of a domain, I'm keeping with the trend of opposite of domain expansion. I think it's pretty cool if you step out because you can get out it's not a barrier you can get out you will be forced into a state of zetsu for 10 minutes so there's no getting out of it once you're trapped in it you can but if you do if maki's with her people you will be picked off because you cannot wield nin anymore they'll kill you in one shot if you can't wield nin and you get hit by somebody you can you will be fatal fatally wounded most definitely there's no doubt about that it was stated so you don't want to leave the barrier once you're in or leave the hot so you can but you shouldn't and also if you're on the outside and you come in why it's been activated you will be forced into a state of zetsu with inside or within and maki will probably kill you or anybody else who's in there because you cannot wield nin and they can still wield nin in there they just can't use hatsu they can or up their fist and punch you and kill you you can't use your aura you're in zetsu so you cannot protect yourself on the outside so I hope that makes sense. Once, once she creates the end bubble, you cannot use Hatsu. If you're inside and you go outside, four state of Zetsu for 10 minutes. If you're inside and go, if you're outside and come inside, four state of Zetsu for 10 minutes. So no traveling in and out of the barrier unless you want to be picked off and killed, basically. All right, so rule number one, Maki must provide a weapon to the opponent. If there are multiple people inside of the barrier when she activates it, only the person that is granted a weapon can move no one else can move as well as they are also immune to injury like you cannot hurt them you cannot attack them in the barrier you cannot attack the person that does not possess a weapon basically if that makes sense so they're in there and they can't do anything but they're also protected and so if if it comes to a situation where maki has to fight a bunch of people she can pick them off one by one with this ability so she's not going to get overwhelmed i didn't want to just leave her in uh, vulnerable to like gang fights so she can they can't move once you come in and then if anybody decides to come in zetsu you can easily kill them so hope that makes sense all right so once she offers them a weapon they don't have to take it it's just an option she has to offer it she has to offer the situation to put herself at a, at a disadvantage because she is wielding just a small knife and if she if they take the sword she'll be at a disadvantage if they have their own weapon too that's fine all right so now we get down to the rules of the combat or the hellish coliseum so the object of the hellish coliseum is for maki and her opponent it's a level playing field this hatsu levels a playing field to land critical hits so things that really damage if you're fighting and someone punches and they punch your arm really good that's not a critical hit but if they punch you and break your arm that's a critical hit we all know what critical hits are we play video games y'all play all the stuff you watch anime that has to deal with it so you know good shots like if someone punches your ribs breaks a rib if cuts you bad like gives you a bad gash critical hit anything like that so critical hits all right now you have to land five critical hits the first when you gain five critical hits and get five critical hits you are granted access to your hatsu again so yeah if the other person beats maki to the critical hits they get their hatsu and they're at an advantage over her they could probably kill her in you know, relatively quickly not super quickly but she because she can still wield her nin she can protect herself but she cannot fight back so they'll just wail on her until she gets her five hits which brings me to my next point it does not deactivate once someone gets the five critical hits. It only deactivates when both get five critical hits. So if the other person gets their Hatsu first, gets their five critical hits, it's still, Maki still has a chance to get hers. And if Maki gets her Hatsu back, the other person still has a chance to get theirs too. Which brings me to my next point. 
Maki has another form of Hatsu or just another ability within this Hatsu. Once she gets her five critical hits, she is granted a weapon called Red Severance. It looks kind of exactly like Dragon Bone or Split Soul Katana, whichever one you prefer her having. Probably the Split Soul Katana since it's the one that Mai created the replica of. So yeah, let's just say it's a Split Soul Katana, but it's called Red Severance in this Hatsu. And what does Red Severance do? So say both of them get their five critical hits, they're both bleeding, maybe someone has a fractured arm or whatever, they both get their five critical hits. Then the barrier deactivates and now they can both use their Hatsu freely and all the Zetsu stuff is out of the window. But you're not gonna wanna get close to them after this. If Red Severance hits someone, it stops their ability to coagulate blood. So if it, and it doesn't do this with just, the sword itself is not special. It's the aura it's wrapped in, the red aura. And red aura is not something that's very prevalent in Hunter x Hunter. There's only been like two people from my immediate recollection. Uvo Gein had red aura and Genthru had red aura on his like little flower bombs. Only people like, those are the only ones I can remember. Like there might be other people, maybe Yuppie had red aura, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's the aura. So when it cuts you, it stops, your blood from being able to coagulate and like make scabs and all. So your blood will run free from every cut in your body. And remember, they were fighting to get critical hits before. So they've been hit critically five times, whether it's a broken bone, maybe two of them are gashes. Maybe she got critically hit or she critically hit the, her opponent twice. And she has, it has a big gash. They have a big gash on their chest and one on their back or something. They're already bleeding from there, but the body starts to heal. But once they get hit with red severance, they can't heal anymore. The blood won't coagulate, it won't thicken up, it won't clog and clot the uh, cut. So they'll start leaking. And it's the aura that does this. It's not the weapon. It's the weapon that is surrounded by the aura. The aura is doing it. And so the only way to stop it is to have a Nin Exorcist remove the aura that has been placed in your body by red severance. So even if this person beats Maki and kills her, you know, post-mortem Nin, the... Red Severance aura from the blade will get stronger and it will still, it will endure. It will still go on even after her death. So the only way to stop it is Nin Exorcism. And even by that, by the time you find a Nin Exorcist, remember how long it took Crollo? Nin Exorcists are not all over the place. They're rare. The person will probably die before they ever reach a Nin Exorcist or whatever. Like your best option will be able to get uh, IVs of blood in there pumping in them at all time at the rate that they're losing blood which is almost impossible to do so you're not gonna want to let maki get red severance you got your hopes are to get your five critical hits first and hope that she does not hit you again because if she gets red severance and lands a hit lands a hit which on most people she probably would you're probably gonna die there's just no way to stop it so that's the ability for the most part i think that is yeah Creates a Coliseum. If you go in or out, you're forced into Zetsu only for 10 minutes and you'll be picked off by people who are wielding Nin or homies or her. And the person wielding the sword is the only person that can move. The other people, they can move, they just can't do stuff. I'm gonna say they can move, they just can't interfere with the fight. If they do, obviously they'll be damaged because they are, you know, actually no, they can't move, fuck it. They can't move, fuck it. No moving. All right, creates the bubble, forces people uh, forces you not be able to be able to use Hatsu. If you go in and out, you're forced into a state of Zetsu. You got to try to hit each other, Maki and her opponent, critically five times. First one to get uh, five hits gets their Hatsu. Then the next person who gets it gets their Hatsu. Once both people or all people have gotten their Hatsu activated, then the barrier comes down. And she's gained, she gets red severance for getting five critical hits. If she cuts you one time, you're probably gonna bleed out. You could probably make it, but if she keeps hitting you continuously with it multiple times, you will probably bleed out on the spot. So you, you cannot let Maki get her ability. You gotta get her five times before she gets you and finish it once you get your Hatsu. Once you get your Hatsu, you're at a big advantage, but you just better finish her off there. And this ability is not super broken. You can let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know if you wanna see if you had any other conditions. I like this. I don't wanna make it too strict because I want to have more fun with it. I don't want to put in ridiculous conditions, but I'll definitely add more conditions on the next one, but just not for Maki. I think Maki needs a special ability, but in saying her ability special, it's not broken. People like Netero would probably beat the shit out of Maki still. They're just better 
she, they're better at combat. Netero would beat her at combat. Even if he refused the weapon and just fought her hand to hand, he would probably make her bleed and get five critical hits way before she did to him. And so people like Netero are out of the question for her, I think. People like Hisoka, Krolo, and people like that, the Zoldix, Silva, and Zeno, they are high tier. She might not be able to beat them. The Zoldix are trained assassin, assassins. They got martial arts. Krolo took on two of them and was only bleeding from like his eye or whatever. Hisoka is a also a martial arts expert. You probably just his uh, movements are too freaky to predict. You're probably not gonna get any hits on him. Only time he really gets hit is when he's letting someone hit him, which is funny, like Castro and going and all that stuff. Other than that, he's you're just not really touching him. So this ability is not too broken. It's not off the wall. It's not crazy. So yeah, she can be defeated with this ability. I didn't want to give her something broken because in her own verse, she's not even that broken. She's not even better than Toji who has the same thing. A lot of people say, oh yeah, she's equal to Toji. I mean, yeah, she has the, the speed and power, but she doesn't have his combat prowess and his tactical mind and his arsenal of weapons. So yeah, she's not on the same level as someone like Toji. If if we took these two abilities, hey, this I should start doing battles between the Nint abilities that I create. But that that's for another that's for another time. Further down the road when I start making more people to have like battles and tournaments or whatever. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this ability. I really like the bubble that forces you to not be able to use Hatsu and if you go in and out that you have to go into Zetsu. I think that's really cool. Maki is a strong fighter. I feel like more often than not, she will be able to get the five crits, the five critical hits, and activate her Hatsu before the other person and then all she does all she has to do is hit him one time or two times and they'll probably bleed out and die so maki's ability is very lethal there's a lot of people who, whose abilities are not lethal in and of themselves hisoka's bungee gum is not really lethal it's just how he uses it Krolo's ability is not really lethal it's how he uses it same with most people but a lot, some people have lethal abilities like gen through it's just lethal Kilowas getting electrocuted, it's lethal. And the list can go on and on with people whose abilities are truly dangerous. Phaeton's ability is lethal. So hers is one of those that is lethal. Once she gets her subcategory of a hot suit or red severance, it's pretty much over if you let her hit you. And she's already hitting you five times. She's already hit you five times. So one hit, you'll bleed from all those. Maybe some of those were like a fractured arm or fractured something, a couple broken ribs. And so maybe she only cuts you once or twice. But if she cuts you again, you'll leak profusely from that spot. And humans bleed out in like five minutes if they're hit in critical spots. Critical hits are not the same as critical spots. A femoral, if she slashes their femoral artery, they'll die in minutes, five minutes, less than five minutes. If you know, I don't have to say about the neck, but there's other places where, you know, if you just get hit one time, it's pretty much rest for you. And you can't stop it because you need a Nin Exorcist to get the aura out of there. The aura is preventing your blood from coagulating and it's going to keep seeping out. You can't heal. You can't clot. You can't scab up. So you can put whatever you want on it, put a, a bandage. It's going to keep pouring out. Maybe put some Vaseline. I don't know if they even had that in the Hunter Hunter verse, but yeah. That's the ability. Let me know your thoughts. Pretty broken. It basically creates like a game like tournament atmosphere, like in a coliseum. So that's why I named it that. You know, if you have a better name, let me know. I, I, I like that though. And I like the rules and the conditions, how it has to be an even playing field. She has to offer them a weapon and she has to allow them to have the same benefits she does. So her Hatsu gives her no advantage until the very end. And even then it doesn't grant her an advantage it's just something she still has to use she still has to figure out and how to hit them if they're a better fighter than her like netero if he gets his hot suit first and she manages somehow to get her fifth critical hit on netero and get red severance she's not going to hit him with that she's not he's gonna guanin bodhisattva for her ass back to jujutsu kaisen and that's gonna be he's gonna one shot her simply and that's gonna be that so there's people that she just you know, she won't be able to mess with. And yeah, let me know your thoughts on the abilities, guys. I'm welcome to your critiques. Obviously, this was a more loose ability because it is a specialist ability. So do not, you know, I'm pretty sure you've already criticized the ability 
if you made a comment before you even made it to this point, which is fine. You know, I'm welcome to all criticisms. But yeah, this is more of a loose ability because it's Maki. I wanted to give her something, you know, special, but not too broken. But yeah, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and drop another character you want to see. But I will catch you in the next one, guys. Peace. <laughs> I'm